Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 23rd in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. So this episode we're going to carry straight on from where we left off last time. And at the end of the last episode we had a script which when we press play will start us. And we end up with a text box, where am I? I need to find a way out of this wood. So we've considered this the main quest. So what we're going to do in this episode is continue this main quest and by the time we get to, let's say, this area just up ahead here, it's going to say it looks like a village and investigate the village. So to do that we'll be using a similar sort of script except we'll be using an object which is a trigger. So in scripts, quests, main quest, let's create a new script. And I'm going to call it 002 uh, exit wood. I'm going to open up in Mono Develop, and as I always say, if you have Visual Studio, that's fine, makes no difference. So let's delete the code it gives us, and we're going to set um, a couple of variables here. So the first one, we'll go with var, we'll put. Um, the text box. So we'll just simply put um, the text box. That will be a game object. Next, we'll need the text inside the text box. So that'll be var um, player text, and that will also be a game object. Now, do we want to change the quest? Yes, we'll change the quest status as well. So var quest status can also be a game object. So last time we used um, the function start. This time we're going to use on trigger enter. So function on trigger enter, and then in brackets, call, then a colon, then Collider. Now Collider must turn blue there, so you must have the capital C. So um, it's the same as when we did the coins, it's just uh, checking that you know, it, it, there is a collide there, so we're okay, and it then can then execute the next couple of lines. So the first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to set active uh, the player text and the text box. So the text box dot set active is, oops, not false, we want true semicolon and player text set active is also true so now we want what we want to do is we want to make our player say something and I'd like him to say something along the lines of looks like a village over there for this line so what we're going to need to do is use the same um, principles what we used last time and we'll have player text dot get component dot uh, open spiky bracket and text close spiky bracket open close bracket dot text equals uh, looks like a village um, I tell you what, we'll put looks like a village over that bridge and then um, quote to close the actual line, so that should all be orange, and then a semicolon. And we'll want this to display for about three seconds, so we'll use the yield function. Wait for seconds, and we'll wait for three seconds, which is fine. And then after that three seconds, when it's given us a chance to read the text and possibly have a voiceover, um, we need to set this text now to blank. So you can copy that entire line, paste it beneath the yield, and just get rid of all the words. So it's just a, two double quotes. And I'll also get rid of the text box just for one second. So the text box dot set active is going to be false. And we'll give it, yeah, we'll give it a second wait. So yield wait for seconds in brackets one so we've displayed our uh, first line then we wait three seconds to read and we've taken it off we're going to wait a second and then we're going to display 
our next uh, sentence which the player says. So we can copy this line of code again rather than type it out. For the purposes of this tutorial, it's easier to copy and paste um, lines that we've already written. It keeps the tutorials um, shorter and kind of more to the point. So what we'll do then is we will make our player say, um, I don't know, I had better get get uh, across that. So we'll say, we'll say the bridge. Now you'll notice at this point, yes, we have our player saying something, but we turned off our text box. So we need to turn it back on. And we can just copy this line of code that we wrote first. So now our text box has come back on and we're saying this. So we'll wait, um, yield, wait for seconds and we'll wait another three seconds for that text box. And then we'll close uh, the text by repeating this line and this line. So we want our text to go back to blank, for this line, and we want to remove the text box. And we also want to disable the player text itself, just for good practice. So player text dot set active is false. So the well, this isn't going to be the last thing we'll do because we're going to we're going to play with this script in just a second, and then we're going to modify it even more because we have to. Uh, kind of prove a little point when we play. So the last thing we'll do just for now is update our quest status. So it's going to be quest status dot get component dot um, text and I have realized I've, I've put test there not text so make sure you do have text not test. Good job I spotted that. Uh, open close bracket dot text and that's going to be equal to reach the village and then close curly bracket and save. So now let's head back to Unity and hopefully we don't get any errors in our console but we do. No oh, it doesn't like something. I've seen this before. Quack is not a generic definition. Not entirely sure why this happens, but sometimes Unity decides to kind of predict what you're going to type and it doesn't get it right. So that's why that error has appeared. So that should definitely be get component, not the autofill which um, Mono Develop decided to put in there. So let's save, head back, and that should disappear, which it does. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to put an object just about here, which will be our trigger. And we're going to use a cube, nice and simple. My cube is massive, right in my face. So I'm going to position the cube just um, over here, sort of not quite on the ground, but near enough to the ground so our player can walk through it. I'm going to extend it along um, the x-axis by about 20, maybe. Bring it up just a touch. So it looks good enough that um, our player can walk through it. So make sure you tick is trigger just there. Um, now, got some console errors there, but not to worry. Uh, drag and drop the script we've written, exit wood, onto cube. And you'll have these down the bottom. Text box, player text, quest status. So let's head into the canvas and let's apply these. So the quest box, the quest text, let's put on quest status. Message box one, let's put on text box. And text player goes on here. And let's save our project. Now let's press play and hopefully we should get the results we want. Well, almost. You'll see why in a second. So we need to find a way out of this wood. That was what we wrote last time. So we're heading towards the village. This is our trigger, so let's hit our trigger. Looks like uh, a village over that bridge. I had better get across that bridge. So first things first, as you can see, we need to modify the text which has reached the village because we need to put in the words active quest. 
but you'll notice that that trigger can also be triggered multiple times, repeatedly, over and over and over, and cause a glitch. So let's fix that right now. Head back to the script, and where we've got reach the village, let's type active quest, just so it's a bit more uniform with everything else we've been putting. Now we need to put um, a line of code here which we used, I think, on the coins quite a few episodes ago to kind of move them away from where they are and then take them away. So we'll do transform.position um, equals vector3. So we're defining um, a specific point in our world where we're going to just stick this object just for a second while we run this script through. So let's put it in zero minus 1000 and zero again. So now it'll put this object down the bottom of our world where we'll never actually see it. And at the end of this, what we'll do is we will set this game object inactive. So this dot game object, remember that's a lowercase g and a capital O, dot set active false. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to keep the cube as it is just for now. Let's have a quick thing. Yep, so everything's fine with our script. Should be able to walk over here now. Uh, it says, Where am I? I need to find out where it was. Wood. Yep, that's all good. So let's head over here. And uh, you'll notice our trigger has now disappeared. So we can only trigger it once. Active quest should now say active quest reach the village. So the next logical thing to do on this would be to continue the quest over the other side of the bridge. You can use that in the same principle as using this particular uh, trigger. Last thing I'm going to do is turn off mesh renderer here just so as it becomes invisible. You can only see the box collider. So as when we press play in our game, Trigger remains as a trigger, however, you can't actually see it because you wouldn't want to see that big cube in your game, it just wouldn't make sense. But we'd still trigger it like so. Uh, one thing to note you have to be careful with where you place your triggers. If, for example, you place your trigger within another trigger, it will cause it to kind of go off. So, for example, if your terrain is classed, it might be a trigger. If your uh, object kind of intersects your terrain, it will set it off, as you can see, because it kind of gets a little bit confused with itself because it thinks it's been triggered. So if you leave it in a space where only your player could ever trigger it, it's much easier that way, like so. So you should probably know by now, you'll be able to tell if an object is intersecting because the box collider lines turn a very dark shade of green. And if it's not intersecting, it's the light shade of green. So I'm going to save that project there. OK, so we'll leave this tutorial there for now. Um, next tutorial, we're going to go into um, a bit more of how the game looks. So we're going to talk a bit about um, Bloom and sun, uh, sun shafts. So the next episode will be, um, I don't think it'll be too long because the scripts Bloom and Sun Shafts already exist within Unity Standard Assets itself. It's a case of knowing what each of the options do on that and how you can use them to different effects. And we might also carry on our um, quest that we've written now over the other side of the bridge. So by the end of next tutorial, our game will be looking a bit more, perhaps maybe like an Elder Scrolls style game with just a bit of bloom um, and some sun shafts, but we'll see when we get there. So until next episode, you feel free to really extend your quest, you know, build up what you've got. And to be honest, guys, I would love to see what you're making so far. These tutorials themselves, they don't really look much, but the idea of them is to kind of take all the principles of what we've put here and you make your own massive game.
I've seen quite a few games. Um, I've seen one guy create a game. He's called it Coins of Destiny. And to be honest, yes, you can see that he's been influenced a lot by what is developed in this tutorial. But for a beginner developer, that's pretty good. So like I say, I'd love to see what you guys are doing, um, what you've learned from these tutorials. So just hit me in the comments. Send, uh, go over to the website, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you let me know, you let me see. So until next episode, uh, thank you very much for watching.